Hey you guys, here with another video, a little bit more tailored for the international medical graduates who are going to medical school in the Caribbean. How to score over a 250 on step one. This is going to be particularly important, especially because when you're applying for residencies, one of the tools that residency programs uses to sort of compare different candidates, not only in the, in the Caribbean medical schools, but also medical schools from osteopathic schools versus MD seniors, meaning in allopathic schools here in the US, is a number rating which is used by the step one. The USMLE is designed to be an overall bell curve depiction of how well medical school students know main medical knowledge. While you as an application to residencies isn't necessarily a one done picture, meaning you're not all just numbers. Other important aspects of your application include volunteering, as well as what you've been doing during medical school, your grades, as well as your GPA, and your impressions that you make during your clinical years. What's unique about some of the Caribbean schools is that the quarters, what's unique about some of the Caribbean schools is that your year is broken up differently than other medical schools. Some of you may have three semesters or four different semesters, meaning that you may have more time to study for the USMLE and not have to worry as much about classwork. So that's going to be number one, is that when you start your dedicated period, whether it be one month up to a couple of months prior to your examination, you need to make sure that you're really putting in time towards board heavy materials and some of the materials I'm going to be talking about what you should be using prior to your exam. For those of you who unfortunately have to still do classwork while studying for the USMLE Step 1, in that case I have to say this, that you really have to put a little bit more time towards your board heavy materials and a little bit less time towards your classwork. That may mean that you're going to be taking a little bit of a hit on your classwork and your GPA, but that does not mean that you should be failing your classes. First and foremost, you need to pass medical school, and that's going to be really important. But if you're able to really cut some time away from classwork and put more hours towards board studying, you're definitely going to see an improvement on your practice exams, and then you're going to get a better grade overall, a better score on the USMLE which will really make a difference in your outcome when you start to apply for residencies for the match. In terms of some of the materials that you should be using, you need to be able to memorize first aid. Now it took me quite some time to be able to go through this entire book fully, but you really need to be going through every single page and learning the punctuation. One of the ways I think going through it is going to be easier for you is to use a question bank and start to hit some of the topics that they talk about and then go into your book and find it there every single question you take. And that brings me to my next point, is choosing the right question bank. Now, I've heard a lot of different mixed reviews about the USMLE RX, which is a question bank that the first aid authors have created, along with other authors, in order to sort of help you go through first aid. I think it's really helpful as a guide as you read through the book, but I don't think it's going to be your primary means of getting a high score, and it's really not the most high yield material. I've also heard a lot of reviews about the Kaplan course, which I'm not going to comment much on. I didn't really use the Kaplan question bank as much, but I know some people who've used that in addition to the next question bank I'm going to talk about and still did really well. I would not recommend using Kaplan as your primary question bank source. The most important question bank that you should be using is the USMLE World, or UWorld, which is going to be extremely high yield topics. Originally, this company came out with the step two question bank and then started making step one questions for the USMLE. It's going to be an incredible way to get through the first aid in addition to USMLE RX question bank. The next tip of advice that I have to give you is that you need to really limit the resources that you use. If you're using a different, if you're using a bunch of different books such as an anatomy book, physiology book, and microbiology, all these different resources, you're not going to get time to really hone in and learn those resources and learn every single page of those books. You need to be able to really let go of certain books and use only a limited number of resources. That way you can get through those books more times. For example, I really want you to be able to read first aid a total of five or six times prior to your exam. And I mean reading it fully from front to end. If you're using two different board study books, there's no way in hell that you're going to be getting through both of those books entirely. So therefore stick to one. In terms of a resource for pathology, Pathoma has been exceedingly well and had students do really well on the pathology exam portion of the, of the USMLE. I really think this is an awesome resource because he uses videos, 
that really pair well with the books that he makes. I urge you to get through Pathoma at least once or twice prior to your examination and use it in addition to first aid in, in UWorld. Create your own flashcards. Now I know a lot of people who use Anki, which is sort of this software program on using your computer that you can download, that sort of picks up flashcards and throws them at you more often when you say that you don't know it as well, um, and then makes the ones that you do know well pushed back to the end of the deck. The issue with Anki is that it's sort of hard to use and it's not exactly super user friendly, and unless you have a friend who can really show you how to use it, I would try to stick to your own flashcards and really just make them old school on pieces of paper and then writing down the question and an answer on the back or like a picture, some sort of mnemonic that's really going to help you. The reason that this is also helpful and kind of similar to Anki is that if you have a little deck, the flashcards that you know pretty well you can sort of throw to the back and the flashcards that you don't know so well start to throw them only a couple of flashcards behind the ones that you're about to do. That way you hit those more often. And then for the next day, make two different decks or several different decks depending on how well you know certain topics. Making your own flashcards is going to be super important because you know the content. I think if you find a one to two gigabyte download for Anki on someone else's account, some, some flashcards that somebody else made, it's not going to be tailored to you and it's really not going to be helpful for the exam. Really you need to be spending most of your time doing questions because that's what the exam is. It's literally multiple choice questions and learning how to do those quickly and efficiently. Going through your resources multiple times and then creating your own flashcard. I would say one of the best things I ever could have done on learning topics that I didn't know well is using mnemonics or drawing pictures. You can do that into your first aid book or use little pieces of papers and then put, uh, gluing it into your book or taping it in on certain different pages. That's going to be super helpful it's very tailored to you and you gotta figure out how you learn. The next most important step is to study up until the day of your exam. Just like a marathon, the day before your marathon you don't necessarily don't want to be doing anything. You're not just going to be sitting around eating spaghetti all day. You're going to be doing stretches and maybe you're going to be doing a little light jog and a little stretches and light jog on the morning prior to your marathon. Very similar to the step one. You want to be doing questions up until one or two days prior and then start to take it easy on the one or two days prior to your examination, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't be doing anything. In fact, the morning of, I had my first aid with me and I was still reviewing things and going through and flipping through the pages. The hardest thing to do is gonna to be to relax for this exam. I know it's a really big deal and it's very stressful, but really talking to your family and friends and some sort of supportive system so that you can really relax. If you follow all these steps precisely, you really should be doing well on this exam. As always, like and subscribe. Please let me know how I'm doing and please comment below on the, if there's anything else that you guys want me to talk about. And as always, good luck.